yes. We have been waiting for this for a considerable length of time. Alright lads, welcome back. Tarts of Iron 4 and the New Order mod. I've told a few people now that I uh, I wouldn't be doing another The New Order run until, um, until whatchamacallit. Uh, Brave New World has updated. But like, effectively, unless you're playing Shuxin, then all Brave New World is is the ability to core Central Asia and use decisions to declare war on... Um, on Germany and, and peace out with them. All that can be done with, with console command. And, and I should stress that this is not a Rodzevsky run. No, the next Rodzevsky run will be once he gets his full update. Um, but no, we are here today to explore the new Smutta tree, um, the second time of Troubles, um, tree for Rodzevsky. So his initial tree has been completely changed. So I am very, very excited to see it. I plan to do this uh, with a few different... Um, a few different warlords. I'll, I'll try and do as many as I can, as many as I'm interested in. Um, sorry for not getting this episode out sooner. Um, today, as in, oof, what, eight hours and twenty-two minutes ago, the uh, the final Drozdowski episode dropped. Thank you for the fantastic response in that series. Tons upon tons of comments. Haven't responded to all of them yet, but I will very much be doing so. All right. Okay. So first of all, we have this new um, new artwork. Obviously, this soldier here is closer. Um, He's close, so he's in... He has better resolution, he's in better frame. Now, what I'm assuming this is... Like, these are clearly landing ships. I, I can only assume that this uh, these are the Free French Forces landing in, on, in, um, landing in mainland France. And that these are the, uh, the mainland French troops um, basically rallying to resist them. Is, is, what, is what I think they are, but to, to be honest, the uniforms aren't very French, I, I don't think. Uh, the helmet is kind of ish French. But, um, I'm not really too short about this. I think the soldier has, has gotten shot and is going down. Of course, we have McNamara here. We have the, um, what I can only assume is to be the Free French uh, raising the flag. Uh, assumedly after winning totally, perhaps, just after cap uh, capturing Marseille. And I assume this is just the Americans bombing the shit out of something. Unfinished business. Any change here? I wonder if this, I wonder if this screen will be any different. I'm very excited to see. All right, what do we got? Uh, yeah, the Vaj of the Russians. Don't believe that's changed. RFP. That's right. Yeah, the description seems fairly similar. It's been a very long time since I've read it. I'll just quickly check the recording. Make sure that I read everything correctly. I hope you enjoyed the. Um, um, the new series trailer for the Saban series, yeah, that ain't never gonna happen. Anyway, let's see, has that has that have, have the benefits of that increased? It seems to be quite strong. Paranoia divulged. As if she's paranoia, got nation labor. All right. Seems to all be fairly similar here. Okay, so we shall load in. Or rather, we shall. Uh, get to the main menu screen. Well, no, n not quite the main menu screen either. No, uh, just this screen. The uh, uh, country selection screen. That's new. Why have some of the names been changed? Why, why is Kaganovich no longer Tumen but the West Siberian People's Republic, but we are still Amur and not the all-Russian government of Amur? Also, the Euro Military District has a new colour. That's the first thing that I've noticed. Also, Yegorov is here now. No, no Vrashlov, that's right. Yegorov is here. Let me quickly check Yegorov's age. I'm not... He was actually he was, he was actually featured in a recent poll, but I'm not entirely sure what age Yegorov is. Would he be older than, um... Zhukov? Assumedly so, if Zhukov is his successor. Okay. Yegorov was born in 1883. Zhukov born in 1896. Okay, yeah, that's a significant difference. Yeah, that's fairly significant. All right. What else have we got? Any other name changes? Yeah, the West Siberian People's Republic. That sticks out. Thief Territory of Yugur. That's also changed. It used to just be Yugur. This is also changed. That used to just be Vorkuta. So, so yeah, Siberian Black League has changed as well. That used to just be Omsk. But nothing else has really changed. It's 
It's almost like it's quite literally only in Central... That's also changed Pacific Fleet. They used to just be Kamchatka. What else? The font on that looks messed up. I think it's because of the terrain. That's changed. Um, Southern Curson, we'll call it. Um, never used to be part of the uh, German territories here. What else do we have? Slovak State. I feel like I don't think it was ever called a state before. What else do we have? Oh my god, I forgot about that. Italy, you are looking magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. But so much smaller. Damn. Yeah. So much smaller. Yeah. But un undoubtedly better, but, but still so much smaller. Also, how did, how did Italy not take the Dalmatian coast after they won? Like, how is that not a thing? Do you still have the declining trade? National spirit? You don't. That's good. Because I always hated that, that national spirit. Okay. Let's see what else we have around the pool. Is that new? I feel like that's new. Hating the Dominican Republic. Yeah, that's, there's, a, there's a Caribbean Legion thing. Um, I feel like... Oh, is that difference? Is, or is that difference? Well, wow, nice. N nice English, Josh. Yes, n it's very nice. I feel like the the Northern County Special Zone used to have more of Ulster. Hmm. All right. Ordensat Burgund is of course is of course now much smaller, and what they do is when uh, when Germany collapses they expand, um, and this is the land that they take. So we can have the whole you know, um, Ost Paris West Paris thing going on um, for intrigue and spa. You didn't take Monaco. Okay. Or, uh, yes, Monaco. Monaco? 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 Yeah, Monaco. Uh, is this... No, I don't think that is different. Kingdom of Hungary has the same amount of... No, I think the Kingdom of Hungary had now has Southern Slovakia. I feel like they the Slovaks used to um, have that. Hmm. That's definitely changed. I feel like it, it, used to, it used to just be Turkey. Maybe that's just me. Yeah. All right, baby. Amur. Also, the custom countries path mod is now completely integrated into the new order, which is fantastic. It means it'll be updated at the same time. Yeah, the the in the uh, Kyrgyz Soviet Republic is also messed up. I, again, I'm assuming it's because of the terrain. What else do we have? By Nip and Taikoku, that's the same. Yeah, Central Siberia just seems seem to seems to have gotten a massive overhaul with uh, the names, but literally nowhere else in Russia. Not that I can see. There was always Novo, almost Kemerovo, Krasnoyar, Siberian Black Army, People's Revolutionary Council, and Poots. It all seems the same. Absolute balls. Hmm. 
Russia unites motherland or Sib Siberia unites for Russia. That's different. Can you... S Can you still choose whether or not they do it peacefully? Don't take these borders, dude. Oh, yeah, 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 I know what you mean. I'll slightly turn this down. That's why I am still slightly sick. Um, I did go to work today. So I think my hearing might be slightly off. Oh wait, hang on. I didn't even know that there was a difference. Yeah, 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 the only... Ah, so Bath only do, does only get elected if um, if there's an intervention in the South African War. I think I was wondering that in, um, in the Borman series. Okay, let's have a look around. What do we have in terms of... Ru oh, here we are. Here's Russia. Ah, here we are. e super Regional. Okay. That is still here. A pony dog. Fuck's sake. Buck Aaron. That's just fucking stupid. Yakutsk. Yeah. Oh! So, so now there's a decision for that. I remember it's at the Super Regional stage. American, like, Magadan is in, like entirely based around, ba you know, getting American backing. And, and you do get American backing for most of the game, but at, at the super regional stage, America could just say, no, we're not recognizing you. <laughs> so, or or it, it, may, it might not be like a recognizing, a recognition, a recognition there we are, issue, but I think it's just a, like an extra kind of backing issue. Vlasov's choice and Vlasov's successor, yeah, because there is actually a, um, a difference. I, I remember one time I was trying to play Bonyachenko and Octane took power. Looks fantastic. It's so much better laid out now. I feel it just—it just looks better, just instinctively. <laughs> nice. Look at all those American decisions. Hell yeah. I, here. Oh, this is looking very nice. So the diarchy is Antonio de Spagnola, right? Status quo is the best one easily. Well, Carter, that's definitely who I want to play. Ooh. I wasn't actually aware that the coup could be successful against uh, Fernandez Miranda. Holy sugar, look at all that. I don't think I, I don't think I really like the whole Macedonian crisis in Bulgaria at all. Like I kind of feel like, you know, Macedonia is like solidly Bulgarian, so Also I don't think Boris III would ever flee to be entirely honest with you. Jordan Sevov. Who the hell is Jordan Sevov? Matt comes, eh? Todor Zhekov. Interesting, interesting. Bundle of st scores as well, crisis policy. Nice. 
all very, very... Fate of Astra Astrakhan, what? Oh, now you get to choose... Oh, that's very nice. Very... Yeah, this looks absolutely fantastic. A quick shout-out to um, Chef Mocha, our, our resident, the New Order developer, uh, subscriber on the channel. Shout-out to you, my friend. He's been here since, like, five subscribers. Probably the single most OG commenter. All right, let us load in. Pacific Fleet, hitting the trail here. Oh, like, you, you know the rules. New update drops, you gotta play Rodzewski. It happened when Toolbox Theory dropped. I remember the, um, you know, uh, the power of Rodzonomics gives Constantin 85,000 minutes. Because, like, I couldn't believe my eyes when Toolbox Theory first dropped. And I was able to have 85,000 men as Rodzewski going up against Magadan. It was just insane, because the big thing with the Far East, and um, the Secretary General Ivan Sarov commented on it, was that the whole aesthetic was basically, you know, small units operations, just, just due to the, uh, the Far East's incredibly low population, as well as industry. But in kind of toolbox theory kind of ruined that when, when you were able to field far larger armies. Now, it's still small compared to, you know, any of the other regions of Russia, but still, you know, significant enough to hold the front line. Yes, indeed. Oh, I'm very... I think I looked at Rodzevsky's tree... Um, on the Reddit, but I, 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 I'll be entirely honest, I don't remember much of anything. I won't be reading any, um, any events that were already in the game. I'll certainly skim through them just to see if I think anything has been added, but... Like, you know, Rodzevsky's event, Akotin's event, Spolotov's event, Shekarev's event, Spasovsky's event. I couldn't tell you how many times I've confused uh, Spasovsky for uh, Pur uh, Purushkevich. I used to do it a lot, but now I'm like, you know, fairly okay. How many times have I played a mur? I've played it twice on both channels. Well, t twice collectively. On both channels, so one on each. I've definitely played it two or three times recreationally, just for the crack. Probably about five. I've played Cheetah. I played Cheetah once on this channel, uh, doing both paths, but I also had to replay them entirely um, to do Shepanov's path, because I accidentally deleted the save, and I've also played them once recreationally. Once have I played. I've only ever played the West Russian Revolutionary Front once, as Zhukov on the previous channel. It was not enjoyable whatsoever. What else was there? Um, Wagner was the first country I ever played in the New Order, like, at all, whatsoever. Like, I'm, I'm not talking about a YouTube channel, like, this was well before I started a YouTube channel. Well, I suppose probably not that, probably not that long before, to be honest. But, um, yeah, he was the first person I ever played, just because the whole concept of, of Russians... Like, I would understand Russians turning to National Socialism, but, like, adopting this, adopting National Socialism for, you know, you know, Russian and Slavic purposes, but just literally just going in to, like, Germanic National Socialism was just... Absolutely crazy to me, so they were the most interesting. I think I played them first. Well, I don't think I know I played them first. I didn't have any of the um, the colored buttons mods enabled, so it was just it was like the base game UI, and it was just burning the absolute fucking shit out of my eyes. I remember I actually managed to unify West Russia, which is, was probably really good fucking going considering it was the first country I ever played. But then I went up against uh, Batov. No, 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 not Batov. Yeltsin in uh, in West Siberia, and I just. I threw away too many men in the uh, in the opening stages of the conflict. Um, I remember just being like absolutely shocked at how many men I was losing in the new order in comparison to other mods, uh, as well as the base game. I was I was losing tens of pun tens of thousands of men rapidly. Um, yeah. Who did I play after that? I played I played Rodzewski after that. He was the second country I ever played in the new order. Also, um. Just to address a couple of the polls I did recently, I know that this poll was was uh, was further, or was, was longer ago, longer ago, yeah, it was um, a while ago. But the first country I ever played on the on the first channel was um, Vladimir Putin in Millennium Dawn Modern Day. Uh, I think Rodzevsky is currently sitting at like forty eight percent of the vote or something like that. So it's some high forties, but um, yeah, it was Putin first, then it was Rodzevsky, then it was I want to say it was Savinkov after that. And Wagner after that, but I might be mixing up Wagner and Savinkov. Uh, they were definitely the first four, though. 
What else is there? What, who else have I played? I've played Rock Maida once. I've played Irkutsk three times. Uh, once on the first channel, once on this channel, and once recreationally. I've never played Sable because you never catch me simping. I've played Matkovsky and Petlin once each. I don't think I've ever done a recreational Magadan game. Or oh, have I? I might have, but I might have, but I'm not too sure. Never played the Siberian Black Army. I've played Vasilevsky once off camera. I've played who else is in terms of Siberia? I've played Sh uh, Shukshin. I still cannot believe that it's Shukshin and not Shushkin. I just oh my god, it just it Shushkin flows so much better. It, it's 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 a more ergonomic word. Shukshin is just it's, I gotta get over it, but it's just it's it's annoying when you've been calling someone a certain something. For a long time, and then you turn out, it turns out, oh, it's not that. It, it's like when I was calling um, Krishkin Parishkin for like the longest time ever. I, I just, my brain just completely skipped the first K. And uh, what else do we have? I've played Omsk once, I think, on the first channel. Don't think I've ever played Omsk recreationally. I've, oh, how many times have I played fucking Kaganovich? I've played Kaganovich once on the first channel, I played him once recreationally. I think I might have played him twice recreationally. Yeah, I think I might have actually. Who else? <sighs> I've played Batav once, I've never played Yeltsin, and I never will play Yeltsin. Because being a just a traitor transcends timelines. Who else is there? I played Velimir once, or was it twice? It might have been twice, actually. I think I played him once on camera, once recreationally. Who else is there? Fiatka, I've played Shogun once. I've played uh, Soldier Netson once. I've never played Gule. I never will. Um, I've played Octan once. It was probably the single most forgettable campaign I've ever done in my entire life. It was on this channel. Uh, check it out if you so please, but it was just... A useless series, like it was not at all interesting. Um, you know, funny octane money memes aside, uh, it, it wasn't an interesting playthrough. Um, I find that um, Samara's regional tree isn't very good in general because it suffers from the same problem as Viatka's tree, in which all three uh, contenders effectively share the same tree, with the exception of the political tree. Um, yeah, like the whole the military tree, the economic tree, the foreign policy tree, it's all effectively the same thing as far as I can remember. I know that's certainly the case with Vyatka. It's been a long time since I played Samara. I played Bonyachenko once on camera, and I think I might have played him once recreationally. Who else have we got? I played Seferovic twice. Once on this channel, once on the previous channel, I believe? Yeah. Once we got I played Sarov twice, I think, once on camera, once recreationally. I've semi played Tabaritsky. Uh, we all know what happened there. Uh, once have I played. Never played anyone from the, the Komi left. Never played Soslav, never played Bukharina, never played Jadanov. Who else is there? I played Gumilyov once? Yeah, I think once. I played them once on the previous channel. Um, okay, this is taking an incredibly long time to load. I'm shocked. I don't know if the game doesn't care. Who else is there? Played Jay Ferris, played Gumilyov, played. sort of played Tabaritsky, played Sarov. I've, of course, I've played um, Stelina's Despotist Path. We did that on this channel recently. We will be going back and doing her um, her Democratic Path. Um, couldn't tell you when, to be honest, but we will be doing it. It, it is definitely different um, in terms of uh, focuses. Uh, Vlogda doesn't have content. I think that's all of them. It's all the Russian unifiers. Oh, I've never played... This. I've sort of played Tomsk as the Bastiards, it was probably just the most 
mind-numbing, boring shit just I've ever played. I know Georgi Pasklev is very fond of Tomsk because he's he enjoys um, pragmatic realism, which is fair enough. But I am. Um, I think Bunyachenko does the whole pragmatic realism thing a lot better. Uh, yeah, I don't think I even properly finished, like, like gave Karams a proper run. Like, I just literally just started to focus on auto-completing focuses just to see what was what. And his whole mega project was basically building a naval base in Magadan, which Makovsky does at the regional stage, like, years before. Um, though, um, probably the only... Karams does have kind of an interesting thing going for him. It's the whole basically elitist politics thing um, as well as the deharmonization that he carries out at the super regional stage once he takes over the Far East even if like you know he fought Irkutsk to, to do so which is you know interesting because Irkutsk is very much interested in deharmonization when I say deharmonization I'm talking about the, uh, the city oh I thought the game fucking crashed oh my lord please don't crash game Okay, the, the fact that the music is lagged out is a particularly bad sign. I don't think that's ever happened to me, ever. God, I hope the Unfinished Business update hasn't completely stripped away any potential of the New Order series due to how incredibly slow it'll just gonna run. Oh, God, I hope that's not the case. I know I haven't exactly got the most beastly of a PC, but... You know... I'm entirely afraid to tab out of the New Order in case the game crashes. Oh. Okay, let me, I'm going to do it. Okay, I pressed the button. And now I'm waiting for the toolbar to pop up so that I can get into SoundCloud. <sighs> what time is this? Hmm. New films, comics, uh, explained video. Oh no! Now we're seeing the blue, the blue, the blue circle. Oh, there's a toolbar. Okay. This might not be too bad. Oh, another blue circle. Oh, that's not bad at all. Or oh, not good at all. That's the opposite of not bad at all. Honestly, I might play the fucking the VDV song if I can. Instead of trying to go into the playlist. Oh, okay. We seem to be... We seem to be alright, perhaps. I currently cannot see what is happening in, uh, in Hearts of Iron 4 right now. What can I get? Okay, we're still loading in. Never mind. Oh, I clicked... I clicked... I clicked Russian Airborne Troops VDV song. And it's just... I mean, oh, okay. The blue line, the blue thing is gone again. This is fantastic. Great success, I think. Kind of awkward with no music. Oh, I think we're getting there. We are getting there, I think. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. I know it's not exactly the most riveting content. I would. Should I? Should I try and tag into OBS? I'll try. Okay. I'm going to try and pause the recording. And, uh, and I'll be back once we've loaded in. Thank you for joining me for the, uh, the exposition on which the New Order Russian Warlords I have and have not played. Okay, stop recording. Oh no, pause recording. Splendid! Here we are, at long last. Oh, I just... It's just as well I caught that, because that could have been bad. Finally in, that could have been bad. But no, we are here, you see, the Vaj's greatness is not something that can be easily loaded. That's why it took so long. Has the Vaj got new content? Oh, what happened? Here? 
I think it's just been separated. Is that is that correct? But it has been okay. The heir of Harbin. I'm, I'm gonna read this because it's new. Well, it, it's not new, but it, but yeah, you know what I mean. The Vajd. plunging, uh, self, self suffocating. Wait, what? I just was I on this one. The Vajd, yeah. Uh, when the perfidious Soviet Union collapsed under the stresses of German invasion and the inherent weakness of the Red System, the Russian Bundle of Sticks' party and her Japanese benefactors long in exile in the Manchurian city of Harbin were afforded an opportunity to take back Russia. Konstantin Rodzevsky, written in green, you, you, you will notice, Vajd of the all-Russian government took it upon himself to begin reclamation efforts in an attempt to seize Russia and save her from the depravities of Redism. Now, self-suffocating snakes. Plunging into the Russian Far East, the RFP and our allies in the Old White Movement made it as far as the city of Chita before their offensive was stunted as the advance slowed. What? Okay, never mind. What? I thought something, like that. something did happen to the music, but it wasn't permanent, hopefully. Uh, as the advance slowed, cracks began to show in the Tsarists and the Bundle of Stixists, and soon the Whites under Adam and Semyonov. Okay, so it was the Tsarists first, minus Adam and Semyonov. Okay, interesting. Uh, and uh, under Atom and, and soon the Whites under Atom and Seminov seized the city of Cheetah and officially distanced themselves from the party. That's a bold move, considering that... Actually, I won't click Cheetah, never mind, just in case that, uh... I don't think this gets, uh, deleted. It probably, it probably won't, because I have to click this first, but whatever. If the Vaj was surprised at this turn of events, he was enraged when former party member Mikhail Makovsky split the party and set up a rival government in the remote port of Magadan, posing a threat to the Vaj's legitimacy and rule. Now, for God, nation and labor. Showing weakness. Since then, based in the small town of Zaya, the Vaj has become dejected and increasingly paranoid. His closest advisors, Georgi Shakarov and Alexander. Ah, Alexander! Fair enough. Alexander Bolotov, the head of the party's paramilitary black shirts. Oh, never mind. Apologies. And the security minister respectively have indulged his paranoia, bringing the Vajd lists of internal party members who are dissenters and troublesome figures within the regime. You see, the, one of the issues with Rodzevsky's government, whether you consider it to be the way it's written or just, you know, one of the uh, way it functions, is that there's a lot of overlap um, sometimes. So, as this, uh, correctly states here, uh, as this correctly states here, Georgi Shekarev runs the black shirts. And Alexander Bolotov runs the, uh, security min uh, the, the security ministry. And if you choose to set up the, uh, the OOB, the, the security divisions will call them, um, he also runs that, naturally. However, Leva Cotton is simultaneously the party secretary of the RFP, the chief of the general staff, and the field marshal in the All-Russian Army. That man is working day in, day out. Anyway... None shall stand Vosh plans on creating a strong Russia based in National Socialism, where the Vosh is paramount and the system derived from the Germans as law. However, to do this, he will need to cleanse the party of the people responsible for its failures. The Vosh's immediate internal and external threats need to be dealt with before he can focus on ending the red remnants of the West. None shall stand in Konstantin Rodzevsky's path for God, nation, and labor. Fact. Oh, this has all been nicely segregated. Oh, I see that that actually makes it so much easier. I really like that. This is fantastic. Mod development. Credits one. Damn. Lots of credits. Oh, never mind. It just continues. Dedicated to no one this time, but we shan't forget soft white anarchist and Korean James Bond. No. God, nation, and labor. How many units? Don't think that's changed. Yeah. First thing I'm going to do. What is that? There's an end in him, in him. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Probably one of my favourites, uh, my favourite things of Kaiser Reich and Kaiser Redux is the ability to change between English speaking, um, the, the English names, you know, for lack of a better word, and, you know, the native names for a place. That's fantastic. Hope Russia's covered. I'm going to unmute the game now. There we are. Oh, does this work? Not seeing an immediate effect. What if we looked over here at Moscow and, and clicked it? I feel like something is changing. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's changing down here. I saw it change to Bucharesti. Wait, wait, there's, there's several. There's default. There's endonym slash native names. There's exonym slash English names. Okay. Interesting. There's no change in any of Russia? I don't think so. 
I'm not seeing any. That's unfortunate. Whoa! How did I not notice this? What the hell? People's Revolutionary Council is now exclusively in Tanutuva. Oh my god. And and the, the Mongolian People's Front is completely gone. Oh damn. Okay. Now Vasilevsky winning is even less likely. Okay, he has no treat. That's not fair enough. Okay. Huh. Still a clerical bundle of sixes. Bolotov, Steklov, and Spasovsky. And of course, Levercotton. Who can forget Levercotton? Any new national spirits? Nope. Okay. I shall assign our production units. Interesting. Interesting. Rodzaevsky Avtomat, you have to be shitting me! They took the the Fedorov Avtomat. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's chambered in the same caliber as the, as the Fedorov Avtomat. The 6.5. Holy shit. Oh, I, I think I'm going to be geeking out over a lot of this if, the, if, if there's more stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Oh. There's uniforms now. Finally, some... Some early anti-tank weaponry has been introduced. Do these have descriptions? Like, like that kind of looks like an RP-46. Or, RP yeah, an RP-46, kind of. That is interesting. So, of course, we have... Okay, we, we, we are we using Japanese equipment? Okay, no. We are evolving into uh, our old AN-94. Damn. Oh, man. That is crazy, though. Streamline stock, that is an incredibly short stock. Your cheek is going to be resting on the goddamn receiver. That is a short arm. That is a weird looking rifle, but so unique. Then there's the... Is that Belvi? Belvi Automat. Okay. Interesting that they chose to go for Avtomat here, but they, they brought into English here. Or is that Avtomat? I'm not sure. It kind of looks more rounded. But again, that is the same rifle. It's the same cartridge, rather. It's not quite intermediate in our sense of it. Like, you know, say the 7.62 by 39 or the 5.56 or the 5.45. But it is certainly less than your, your full power cartridge. You know, your 7.62s, your 7. Point, um, yeah, yeah. Your 7.62 by 51s, your 7.62 by 54s, your, your 7.92 by 57s, your British 303s. Yeah, so that is also you would be hard pressed to shoulder that caliber with a folding stock or or a wireframe, whatever that is, and the barrel gets even shorter. From, what's that? It looks like it says I think it's I think it's supposed to be 520, 520. Yeah, 520 down to 450 millimeters. Then we get the ARM. What does the R stand for in that? But again, okay, foldable stock option. Hopefully that's not. Standard. That foregrip is incredibly close to the to the AK mag, or the, the mag, and you know you know what the AK is. You have to rock in the mag. You can't just pop it up. So, with the Romanian dong grip AKs, it can be a a bit of an issue with the mag if you're if you're not careful. And this seems to be even closer to the mag than the Romanian dong grip is. Yeah, that might be a problem. Then there's the AKK seventy five. Chambered in 545 by 41? What was this chambered in? It, it didn't say. Okay. But I'm going to assume it's 7.62 by 39 or something similar. 5.45 by 41. Okay. New caliber. Yeah. Two shot bursts is fucking useless. What do we have here? Is this the same? No, not quite. This, this is still Japanese tech. Oh, yeah, we're using Japanese tech here. I think Yaz might be a combination of Japanese and Russian tech. Okay, Yaz is our company. Yeah. Okay, that's probably might just be just Russian then. Okay, we have a recoilless rifle here. 200 millimeters of... 310 millimeters of pen. Getting to the RPG. Okay, so there's no more RPG-2s. Okay. No more Iglas. 
Or no. No, no. The Igloo was the further along, right? Yeah, I did. My bad. My bad. No Strata 2s. No, we go straight to Strata 2M. Okay. I think that might be the same. RPG 29, lad. RPG 29 Vampire is an absolute beast, man. Fucking huge and unwieldy, but really good. The RPG 16 suffers, um, the, the RPG 16, it was introduced after the RPG 7, but unlike the RPG 7, it doesn't, um, b basically, the rocket is entirely contained within the tube, unlike the RPG 7, so the RPG 7 is actually much more versatile in accommodating oversized rockets, which is why the RPG 7 is still used, and the RPG 16 is effectively relegated to paratrooper only, if that. That is, low recoil impulse, that is incredibly interesting. OZM-72 is... Please don't have that as a handheld anti-tank grenade in 1972. SVD-63! Oh, man. RPKs! Wait. How? There is no way... How can you have an RPK if there's no AK? That is incredibly interesting. BS-1, that's, that's an underslung grenade launcher. GSHG, is that a minigun? GV25, underslung grenade launcher, RPK-74, yeah, shouldn't, instead of RPK-74, shouldn't that be, actually no, it still works because of the AKK in, in here, this should probably be RPM. On, on the M here either it's out of the, someone's it's out of the first letter of someone's surname or else it just means modernitia which means modernized if it's someone's surname then the rpk should be rpm oh yeah and that's that's the pump action grenade launcher that's fucking sick oh what is this oh more consumer more consumer goods production and production units of gdp ratio to modify supply range Oh, you already know Josh Logan's going to be researching that. I'm all about those production units. Very nice. Very nice. Any changes in, in the Eastern Town? I'm thinking it was probably left fairly alone. Yeah, yeah the industry tab was, was pretty was pretty much ready. Engineering tab, I would assume, is all, has also been left alone. Yeah, I think so. From what I can see, anyway. Heavy aircraft? That not... Is this... No, 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 what am I saying? No, yeah. Did this, yeah, the, uh... The integration patch for by Blood Alone will come later. I've, I've still yet to buy that DLC. Um, I will literally only buy that DLC if, it, if, if the new order does... Is, if the new order requires it. Yeah, that's all fairly same. Naval tech, I imagine, is, is the same, I wouldn't see. Any reason why it wouldn't be. Oh wait, just going back right there. The, the Sukhoi Su-47, that was probably already there, but the, the Sukhoi Su-47 is a real aircraft. It has a, a, a canard a wing design, which means that the wings sweep forward instead of back. Looks so fucking cool. The Russians don't really use it in um, in their like actual air force, in say frontline service, we'll say, but they use it to demonstrate technology. It's a super cool looking aircraft. I think they actually use it in, um, in Tom Clancy's End War, the video game. Um, yeah. Really fucking good. Cool. MI24s. Is that different? That looks different. That looks that definitely looks different. I feel like things might have been changed up here in the helis. But not in the attack helicopter variety. That's yeah, that's definitely new, I feel. Anything new to military engineering? I feel like there might be. Especially uh, considering the whole, you know, Japanese Sponsorship. Yes, yes, there was. Yes, there was. What have we got? Oh, man. Type 96 howitzer. That looks ancient. I guarantee you those are wooden wheels. That is a, a what? A 150mm gun. Okay, okay. Not fucking around. Four rounds per minute. That's not too bad. A D74. 122 millimeter. Is that a real gun? I don't think that is. I've never heard of a D74. 122 millimeter bore is pretty good though. In this timeline, at least. Type 8 AA gun, 75 millimeter. Okay. NB7, looking a lot like uh, some of the heavier, heavier Soviet tanks in our own timeline, like the IS7. It's a 130 millimeter gun. Insane, lad. 
the ST74 AM Mammont. I assume that's supposed to be Mammoth. Dual 120mm cannons. Surface to air missiles like some of the fucking North Korean would have. You'd, you'd obviously see the North Korean tanks with like the fucking man pads strapped onto the uh, turret. The Type 5 Chi Ri. The Japanese only made a few of those in our own timeline, but they kept them in defense um, of the home isles in Japan. They, they never saw combat, I don't believe. But it was effectively supposed to be like a, uh, a Japanese Tiger tank. Yeah, 88mm gun. AFV here, lead, which leads into the APCs. Where we, okay, a regular tank. Okay. Probably not exactly the best analog, but what can you do? Yeah, APC here. 12 troop capacity. Type 87 Crossley, that sounds like a British. Yeah, that looks very much reminiscent of a British uh, armor car. Getting the BRDM one. F funnily enough, I uh, I only recently cogged that it, was, that it was BRDM and not BDRM. BDRM flows a lot better, but it is BRDM. Uh, of course, if you know the BRDM two, I believe it is. It's the uh, the Soviet armored car with the 14.5 millimeter KPV. Uh, you may also be familiar of the of the uh, the BRDM with like the the four uh, horizontally deployed uh, Conkers, ATG, ATGMs, I believe. I think I believe they're Conkers. You can probably swap them out with, with more modern stuff, though, if you just redesign it a little bit. The Type 10 Ho Hai Kai. I believe that's actually in the base game as well, uh, as as, mecha as Mechanized 3. Yeah, very nice. Looks fairly well armored, too. Type, seven, uh, type 17 Shin Ho 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 Ki. It's got a machine gun in a turret, no less. A troop capacity, okay. Uh, I was literally just talking about it. BRDM2. Okay. So. That's. Oh, okay. That is interesting. That is interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, of course. This is the armored car. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Okay, so in this timeline. The 14.5mm KPV still does get produced. That is interesting. If you if you remember from um, from previous series, I was always speculating whether or not the, the BTR in this timeline would be uh, would be equipped with either a 12.7mm DSHK or 14.5mm KPV, giving the uh, given the technological restraints and of course you know massive upending of the Soviet Union's technological development and industrial development in this timeline. But I guess okay, we're still sticking with the 14.5mm, which is a beast of a machine gun. I believe uh, it 14.5 by 114 millimeter is effectively last stop saloon before auto cannon, which starts at 20 millimeter. Um, it's an absolute unit. I, I think when the Americans were developing the Bradley, they said, you know, like whatever you come to us with, just don't come to us with anything that can't stop a 14.5, basically. Uh, an MTLD, okay, fairly ubiquitous Soviet. Um, Soviet tracked vehicle, though I don't think I'd class it as an AP. As far as I'm aware, the can the MTL be carry passengers? I didn't think I thought it was more like a utility vehicle. Let me quickly check that. I don't know that the MTLB can carry passengers. Well, like not inside of it. Obviously, you can you know sick guys on the uh, on the vehicle itself. Passenger count. Interesting. Like obviously, you know. Every vehicle is an is a is an APC if there is you know <laughs> if you just sit them on top of the vehicle. I didn't realize. Okay, the MTLB can hold one driver, one gunner, and the rest sixteen passengers. Sixteen? Okay, it says here crew two plus eleven passengers. So which is it? You don't often see the MTLB with an armament. You usually just see it like just kind of as a utility vehicle. Where that you could. Okay, you can carry level inventory. I did not know that at all. Interesting. You can carry a, uh, a machine gun, general purpose machine gun. Okay, interesting. I did not know that whatsoever. That's 1960. Yeah, that's fairly. And as you can see, the machine gun is actually represented here, right here. And it's a Yamaz 238. I assume that's referencing the engine. Okay. Here we have a TK-85. Comes with the 85mm D-58 gun. Is that D-58, D-50? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Very reminiscent of, of modern... Um, modern... Oh, what could you call them? Modern IFVs, I suppose. It's very similar to the Stryker. Or if you've ever seen any of the uh, South African... South African IFVs... Um, with the with their 90 millimeter guns or the uh, I believe it's the French Panard 
IFV, I think as well, um, is, is a similar looking vehicle. T63. I have been asking for the T62. I know it says T63. It's a T62. I've been asking for the T60, T T62 for a long time because the T64 is a very technologically complicated tank, especially for the timeline. So it, it would make no sense for effectively any Russian warlord in this timeline to have the technology and the industrial capability to produce the T64 on, on, a, on, a, on even a small scale. They did change it um, slightly. It used to be the T64 with 125 millimeter gun. Then they changed it to a T to a, to a T64 with a 115 millimeter gun. It was like this this bastardized version of a T62 to a T64. But now it seems to just be reliably T62. I know it says T63, but you know it's a T62. As far as I'm aware, anyway. And see a big ass machine gun up here. That could very well be a DSHK. But it'd be really cool if it was a 14.5 millimeter KPV. I would. One of the things that I really want to see from the the current Russian military industrial complex is a new one. Is a new 14.5 millimeter machine gun because the KPV is old and uh, armor is getting thicker. And I think a brand new 14.5 millimeter KPV just to have the 14.5 by 140 millimeter cartridge get the same treatment. That the 12.7 by 108 millimeter got in the shape of the the NSV and the cord would be absolutely amazing to see for me anyway. What do we got here? Same stuff. All right, going down. We have again. It was a Conkers, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the BRDM with the Conkers. Very nice. Very nice indeed. MTLBU. Okay, less passengers. By a significant amount, though it does unlock the modern infantry support gun. Okay. That's interesting. It's weird. It looks like the machine gun's been removed. Okay, that's weird. Uh, we get here to the BMPK. What is that? Is that does that say 37 millimeter? Or is that 30? I can't quite make out if it's a zero or a seven. Do I zoom in? Okay, just uses the regular BMP1 model. That's fine. But it looks like it's like a, a BTR and a BMP has been spliced. It, it probably does say 30 millimeter, but it'd be really cool if it said 37. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's 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 30. It's 30. It's 30. It probably is 30. T76. Naturally, that's our T72 of this timeline. Increased armor. Yeah, we're using the 125 millimeter gun. I wouldn't. Hmm. I'm going to assume that the T63A uses a a manual loader, and that. Oh, I wonder if it has smooth bore rifled, because in our own timeline, the T62, while it uses the um, it uses a manual loader, it does have a smooth bore gun. It was the first Soviet tank to have a smooth bore gun, I believe. Um, and then when we got to the T72, we had the smooth bore gun plus the auto loader. Uh, somehow the West is only now getting to the smoothbore concept. I think the new British Challenger 3 is smoothbore, as far as I'm aware. But smoothbore is better than rifled, as far as I'm, I'm aware. But, um, yeah, this is very interesting. I assume, does that just use regular? Regular T72 model, by the way, it looks fantastic. T72 is a beautiful tank. What do we have here? The RDM 3. Oh, isn't it? Isn't there some sort of War Thunder vehicle, vehicle very similar to this? I, th I think it has a, a fi an American 50 cal or something, or maybe it's a 20. Okay, so an armored car, same BRDM chassis, but slapping a 30 millimeter gun on it. That's a significant firepower upgrade. Then we have the MTLB. Okay, we're sticking with the MTLB for like fucking 20 years, 30 years. My God, that's a BMP too, or three even. Okay, back up to 11. But mounting a KPV machine gun. Very interesting. Almost kind of has the profile of a self-propelled gun. The TK100M. No, po no, no points for guessing what that means. Okay. So we we move back to the large caliber gun. Getting rid of the autocannon. Assumedly, unless it's mounted coaxially. Um, going from 85 mm, uh, 85 mm to 100 mm. Okay. T82. That is... Contact 1 ERA, increased mobility, of course. The T80, uh, in our own timeline, T82 in this timeline, it uses a gas turbine engine. I believe it has a reverse speed of 10 kilometers, which isn't great, um, but in comparison to the T72's 4 kilometers, it's quite good. 
Uh, and, and even modern T-72s like the T-72B3 and the T-72B3M all have a terrible reverse speed of 4 kilometers an hour, which is just shockingly bad. I assume T-72 model? Yeah, that's fair enough. Getting down here, we have the B, uh, BPM-97 Visceral, which I believe is actually a modern Russian vehicle, but it, it does have a very similar um, profile to the, uh, to the BTR-152. High modularity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the MT LBU M, which is like I said, effectively just a, a BP, uh, a BPM, well, a BMP two, um, thirty millimeter auto cannon, um, ATGM, probably fucking grenade launcher strapped on it somewhere. Very nice. Though, though the profile is different, especially the front top, I think. BPM KM. Okay, we, we can't seem to make up our minds about whether we want an auto cannon or a high caliber gun. Well, high higher caliber gun. Because we started with the high, higher caliber gun, then we went to auto cannon, back to higher caliber gun, back to auto cannon. This is, yeah, this is effectively, yeah, yeah, BMPK, BMPKM, so just, just a modernized version, very nice. Oh my god. The T95 Black Eagle program. Basically, if you don't know what the T95 is, it was a tank that the Soviets were developing um, naturally prior to the collapse of the Soviet Union, but it was going to be basically this big step in uh, big step forward in Soviet armored theoretical development. It was going to have a big fucking 152 millimeter gun. It was going to have a fucking uh, a bustle, uh, a car bustle carousel, automotive bustle carousel, something, 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 something like that. Basically. Like all the shells would be stored in, in an armored carousel behind the turret and have a, a bustle. All the, all, they would all be able to feed into the autoloader. It was going to have increased crew protection, all of that. But naturally, the Soviet Union collapsed. Shit went wrong. Um, and the project was effectively abandoned. Now, the Russians have kind of picked it up with the T-14 Armata. But in my own opinion, the T-14 Armata is not going anywhere. And they need to go back to the T-Series tanks. Uh, look like the T-72 with the T-80. Um, I believe they were developing a, a kind of a unified turret called the Burlap Turret for quite some time. Um, I've seen there's a couple of examples now. I'll, uh, I'll go over here and start playing this. Yeah, it's, it's got the contact ERA. No, Pactus ERA. Pactus. Seven wheel platform. Yeah, that's seven, alright. Three, break, two, break, one. And a break, yeah. But yeah, this is fantastic to see. 220% reliability, you madman! Crazy. Let's go over here to the artillery. The T12. ST74 AM Mamont. Oh, I already read that. Okay, the 122mm 2818. You, you can still see these at work today. Uh, I believe I saw a battery of them in Ukraine. And uh, we'll I saw a battery, I'm sure there's quite more than just a single battery. Um, MKB Strela S200. Heavy tank 4, okay. Generic, but let's face it. People aren't going to be using heavy tanks. And then we have the 2A65 howitzer. And the uh, the S300 PMU. One fantastic change to the artillery tree is that it gets rid of the, the 1970 mortar. Because I absolutely hate it. It made no sense going from just barrel artillery just to a fucking mortar with a range of something like 9,700 metres, like, instead of a, you know, a, a barrel artillery gun with a range of, you know, dozens upon dozens of kilometres. No, this is fantastic. See, sticking with barrel artillery all the way. So, the, the introduction of 152mm guns um, coming in the year 1990 seems to be a bit late, especially if we're producing things like T-72s and T-80s. To not have 152mm artillery seems rather bad. But that is just amazing. Bravo, like, to the developers. Everyone who was who were working on this. This is amazing. I fucking love the shit out of this right now. What do you got here? I'm supportive of it, I imagine, this scenario. Yeah, that's great. Infantry type, yeah, man. Oh, lad. M37 mortars. That's fucking crazy, man. This is so fucking epic. 
Especially this though. This is this is a, a real the Rodzevsky Avtomat. Taking the feather off Avtomat, putting your own spin on it, cutting down the barrel. Um uh, no, I believe it's that's a cut down the barrel, the barrel looks quite short. Let's get working on the uh Belvi Avtomat Mark 14. Or as I call it, as I am going to be calling it, the Rodzevsky Avtomat Mark 2. That's fucking great though, the Rodzevsky Avtomat. Um we get this as well. We have three research slots. It used to just be two, right? I think it, yeah. Nice. I appreciate you guys increasing uh, the number of research slots to accommodate for the, the new research. It's always good when that happens. But that is just fucking badass, man. Oh, man, I'm loving this. All right, we'll dump all our production units straight into uh, military factories. We only have, we'll only be able to use three, but hey, three will have to do. Would the people like 300,000? Yeah, that's fine. Mursky, Rodzevsky. Any shake up in terms of our general staff? I wouldn't imagine so. Oh, wait, something definitely has changed. What is it? I feel like something's definitely changed, and I, I'm just. Oh, I feel like we used to have one more. Who was it? Agaev, Tiersen, Shekarev. Cotton. There was one more. I feel like there was one more. It wasn't. It wasn't Bolotov. We never had Bolotov. Who was it? I remember Tiersen's event where he, where he says that this is a professional relationship. Or was it just the four? Okay. Is our only field marshal. Shekrev is busy running the black shirt, so we're going to get a facility Tiersen in charge. Who was it, lad? There was, I feel like there used to be one more. Oh, man. Can't think of it for the life of me. Rodzevsky, I'm still gushing about that, lad. Oh, my God. We have aircraft. Transport aircraft. But aircraft, nonetheless. Do we have air bases? Hey, this has changed as well. Oh, it's definitely changed. Very nice. Now, I've kept you waiting for over an hour at this stage. To be fair, half that was just me talking while the game was loading. But, um... Oh, what? Oh, so some things have just been removed and popped in here, right? No police controls, outlawed, racial integration, refugees bench, child labour. There's been a... There's a new one. Healthcare quality. This functional height can... These, these have been changed as well. Oh, what? This part of discipline is gone. Now it's esprit de corps. The Secretary General will be very upset. Oh, man. What else has been changed? That's the same. That's ah, oh, they did added another level. I wish they added in another level here. Rudimentary healthcare, okay. I wonder what kind of increase we'll get in that over the course of the game.
going decently fast, all things considered. Uh, what I will do, actually, is I will delete the saves of the previous game. There's a new thing, playthrough overview. Goodbye, Drozdowski. You are an... Let's start playing the Zaris playlist. I know we're not Zaris, but I, I don't have a specific RFP playlist. Though I could probably put one together. I, I know there's a few RFP songs on um, on YouTube. Okay. Oh damn, we only have the two. Oh, of course, because we're putting one there. That's fair enough. Though like, that's quite, that's quite strong. Okay. Uh, I said fast secretary. Okay, that is a cotton of... I don't think... I don't think we used to get a cotton event first. Or did we? I'm not quite sure. What's our deficit? Should have reined that in first, but I don't plan on, on, on doing a, a playthrough. Oh, okay, never mind, it hasn't changed. Uh, temporary tax... I no, no, no. Pay that. Uh, slash. No, 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 what am I saying? Up. Slash. Slash. Up. Up. Slash. Slash. First off the precious Nazi corporatism, that's right. We're not a puppet of you or anything. No, we're not like that. You were talking about there about GDP per capita? Where, where, where did that go? Oh, social. There's a new thing. Oh, sugar. Now we're just trade partners in Manchuria as well as it should be. Nuclear stockpile. Okay, not an arsenal. During the last year, population grew by 13,000. I'm sorry, by 20,000. Fuck. 119 women left the workforce. 2,200 people learned to read. That's fantastic. No one enrolled in college nationally. 7,400 died from preventable diseases. I'm surprised that's not much, much higher. Agricultural yields increased by 1.83%. No one received a state pension. Our military personnel increased by 2,932. Oh. Very interesting. Poverty is increasing rapidly. Well, rapidly. Rapidly. Oh, very rapidly. Oh, shit. That is terrible. 
So, focus on autocomplete time. Are these all still 16 days? They are. Broaden conscription. That's new. That's also new. Getting a level one, a level one railway from Toguro to Mikansky to Amur. I think that's new. Just go to the west. Let me see what else is new here. I don't remember. Or actually, no, I think, that, I think that's the same. I'm gonna roll while I do this. Find the enemy. Ronzi's paranoia. Got our bank sent. Proud Russian industry. I don't think that used to give the GDP growth before. It did us, I'm not quite sure. Is that a new event photograph? I feel like it might be. We'll let all the events come rolling in. There he is. That's not new. Actually, funny, I was actually only just looking at this photograph earlier on in uh, the day. Not sure if he's in this photo, but it's either this guy right here or the guy to the right of him is Makovsky, and you can see where they got his his portrait from. Bald mustache, um, yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a new uh, event picture. But yeah, that is a weird looking rifle, man. The, the stock is so sharp. I don't remember the Fedorov Aftermat having a stock that sharp whatsoever. In fact, I remember having, having, it having a, a very nice uh, grip for your hand. It, it wasn't a pistol. It, it's not a pistol grip. But, um... It's just it, it's a, a thinner part of the wood, simply simply said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a very nice part of the, the stock. Just nice... Easily placed, easily, easily placed for hand. Yeah, yeah, it's not even barrel is shorter, stock is shorter, the shorter rifle in general. Trying to cut down on production costs, no doubt. That's that looks like a literal medieval cannon. It looks like the most dated 150 mm artillery piece possible. Fantastic. We do not kill a cotton. Glorious. That's good. The last hundred is Spasovsky, this is Spasovsky to mint. That's right. As soon as the Japanese approach us, about, or rather, respond to us about. Oh, you sneaky bastards! Oh, you beautiful sneaky bastards! Not only are you getting Rodzaevsk back, but you're getting this chunk right here. So does that mean at the regional stage you get this territory back? All of that territory? Or do you get even more? What's this? Soviet remnants? Oh shit! Is there a possibility for, for, for some sort of Soviet civil war to, to rise up here or something? You know, Soviet revolt or, or, or something along those lines. All of this culture is still Russian. Except this. Khabarovsk is still Russian. Oh. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. I'm really enjoying this. 
<laughs> it's only a say when I'm at fucking college or else I'd gladly do a play for But no. Is this on loop? This is on loop, isn't it? My god damn it, my bad. Yeah, because the other songs are on loop. Okay, you've had your fun loading game. All I did, all I was, all I was doing was zooming around the map. I wasn't even going that fast. Also has the has Bash has Bash Kordistan's name changed? I think it used to just be the Islamic Republic of Bash Kordistan. It was always Bash. I feel like it used to be the Islamic, like that's its official name is the Islamic Republic of uh, Bash Kordistan. But I think it I think it used to say the full name. What I remember anyway. Foreman is successor. That is very interesting. Soviet remnants with... Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't have taken that. Assuming stuff is going to come up. Also, yeah, you used to just be Manchuria. Now you're, now you're the Empire of Manchuria. So I, I'm assuming that's a hammer and sickle. But I can't quite make it out. It looks kind of slanted. Max supply divisions 44. God damn, how do we have supply for 44 divisions? The snake Bolotov's event, right? Master fucking crackhead. 150mm guns. We only have 61 of them, but 61 150mm guns. That's some serious firepower. Especially in these circumstances. I, I bumped up, uh. Military production, did I not? I believe I did. I did. I did. Okay. Manchuria? Are you, are, you, are you going to respond? I didn't do the right thing, right? I picked the. Contact the Japanese. In the tournament. That's well. Here we are. Um, this is Baltov's event. No, no, no. Sorry, Shekharov's event. Here we are. Very, very nice. You've truly outdone yourself, giving me more land. How many extra people is that, though? Because I remember it used to be. I remember. You, you, when, when you get this province right here, when you get Rodzevsk, you'd have enough, you'd get enough people to just put, just about put you over in one million. So now all of this is Rodzevsk. So now we're at what, 1.1? 1. 1? No, we're not even at one million. Interesting. I feel like the populations have been adjusted. But that did give us a lot of energy. We got another, we got our hands on another thermoelectric plant. Splendid. Giving us access to, of course, more of our production units. Glorious. The Bolsheviks don't stand a chance now. No, sir. No. Uh, did, did I turn the light on off? I think I did. I did. Lord Zev gets more military base. Military professionals and fully improves. New Assad Brigade. Armors from the Sphere. Nice. In your tactics. Black Shirt Field Divisions. Armored Cars. Disciplined force, going from minimal training to basic training. Onwards liberation. The large speech. Here we go. Here is the smutter. The smutter decision category will be enabled. I am very excited to see this. Super excited, in fact. Military supplies amassed. Oh shit. That was a big increase to our GDP as well. We went from 113 to 379. Okay, here we are. Three decades of exile avenged. Labor's Russia made strong. Okay, so this this is 
the final focus you do once you've beaten everyone. Bottle of sticks at Vanguard. Interesting. But listen, I'm burnt out of my mind. I will make another episode. Oh, why is the game lagging? Oh, I see now. I will make another episode tomorrow exploring the slaughter tree. And we'll actually. Will we do things properly? I don't think. We will, we will. We'll do things properly. We'll play it right from the start of the game, right to um, the unification of the Far East. That's what we'll do. It'll be a special episode. Exploring Rodzevsky's, um, or, or will we do it straight from the start of the game? Because that's that's treading all ground. I play that off camera, and then once we get to the smarter stage, uh, the smarter stage, we will um, record that. But either way, lads, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I know how I was able to talk for uh, nearly an hour and a half, just about geeky out over a. <laughs> The technology tree, but the changes are absolutely amazing. Fantastic work all around from the developers of New Order and Unfinished Business. Truly the best mod ever made for any game ever. Yeah, and I'm especially excited about this. More land. You know I love land. Land is fantastic. Oh, yeah. I cannot get over that Rodzevsky aftermath. Beautiful. Actually, no, let me just quickly look at this. Prevent chaos from spreading. Eight contenders. Okay, and for this we'd have to get... We have to have 70% supplies of... Okay. And this gives us debilitating effects. Interesting. Peace time decisions. Realist, if we amass enough supplies, we can expend quite rapidly. Alright, this is where I'm going to leave it. If you enjoyed this episode and if you were excited to see the Smotter Tree, please consider liking, subscribing, as well as commenting down below a little bit of bribery to grease the pants. I shall see you tomorrow. Or, well, yeah, like I'll be recording the next episode tomorrow, but, um,. Actually, yeah, it, it, it will also be the day after that. I'll see you Monday for the Smutter Tree. See you then. Yes, Chadzevsky. More like Chadzevsky. Yeah.